Uh, the Carolina Panthers don't play till Monday, which means Jake DeLome has Sunday free. Although, I don't know what Jake would normally do on a Sunday anyway, but he joins us on the Adam Gold Show today. Uh, Mr. DeLome, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I am uh, I am well. Um, what would you normally do? Uh, so you, Sundays you're normally getting ready to do a game and you're doing a game. So will you just kind of sit down Sunday and take in the entire slate of NFL games? Absolutely. Why would I do anything else? <laughs> I'm a I'm a football nerd. I, that's just the no way of, no you know no way about it. I uh, Friday nights um, if you know I go watch my my ex high school play uh, if I can, and then Saturday I'm usually not here on most Saturdays, but if my Beloved Raging Cajuns are playing at home. I'll go watch them. And then Sundays, uh, the three or four weekends I'm off during the fall, I will be watching uh, usually the Red Zone channel. I love watching the NFL, and I love staying abreast of it. So you go you go to high school football games on Friday night. Saturday, if you can, you go check out uh, the Raging Cajuns. My gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, listen, we love it. And my – <laughs> my kids are older now. I mean, I have one in college, and I have another that's a junior in high school. So, you know, she goes to the high school games also. And okay. so that, that, that makes it pretty easy. And then we have some friends that coach here and uh, where I play college ball at. And so if I, I'm able to go, I mean, we love it. You know, with, uh, there's something about – I just love everything about sports, everything, what it, what it means and what it, what it does to different communities and things like that. And so I enjoy it. Do you uh, do, do, do you curse at the television when you're watching a NFL game? Like, how do you how do you call that play? I'm not, you know, I'm not that guy. I kind of <laughs> try to watch it uh, as I'm. I try to watch it as a fan, but okay. I do watch it as if I'm watching film. So I'm constantly looking. If you know, I'm a watch, look at the defense, see the structure, see if they're going to bring pressure, and I love listening the, the hot mics. I love okay. listening uh, to the calls. I want to hear the calls and things like that. And, I try to I try to appreciate the greatness for what I think the NFL is because I know how difficult it is uh, week in and week out, and so I, I try to watch it as a fan, but I do watch it with a critical eye at the same in the same breath. I'm going to ask you about Aaron Rodgers in a bit because I want to get to the Panthers, but I am curious on uh, Monday night when you can do you watch the Peyton and Eli experience or do you watch the regular game? Uh, for the most part, I'll probably watch more of the Peyton and Eli. Okay. I'm that, listen, that's, I don't mean to be that way. Like I go way back with those guys. Peyton and I are the same age. We graduated high school a year apart. I've been knowing him since high school. So there's a deep, you know, and okay. I, so there, there's a relationship there. Now I'll, I'll watch both. I'll go back and forth, mm-hmm. but I do enjoy, and I do enjoy when the guests come on and I do love listening to them talk about it and, and like, Call a timeout. What would you do here? And like Eli explain, I, I enjoy that. That's what I really enjoy. It's fun. I mean, look, a million and a half people watched Peyton and Eli. Twenty-two and a half million people watched the uh, the Jets and the Bills. And again, I'll get to Aaron Rodgers and that uh, in a minute. Let me let me get to the Panthers, which is really why we wanted to talk to you. But I think we're having fun anyway. Jake Delhomme is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Bryce Young talked about wanting to get more chunk plays out of the offense. How do they do that? They don't seem to have guys who really stretch the field, at least healthy guys who stretch the field right now. So how do they, how can they design chunk plays from this offense? Well, I think schematically you can do some things and, and hopeful you call the right play at the right time with a yeah. certain coverage and looks like that. And, and listen, I, I, I came in with kind of, I don't know, but I tempered my expectations going into last week's game. There's going to be some – we're going to have some growth problems or growth issues along the way. That's to be expected. I mean, number one overall pick, I think they threw out a stat last week. In the last 20-something years, David Carr was the only one to win his initial game. So right. let's hope, uh, you know, I, deep down inside, I'm like, well, we don't want to win this game and have the same result as David Carr. I mean, we want to have, you know, an established franchise quarterback for years. But – Listen, I think he played some good football last week. We did miss a chance for a, um, a deep play to Jonathan Mingo one time mm-hmm. and, you know, a couple of other times. And Bryce has alluded to it, and the film does back it up. One of the interceptions, give Jesse Bates credit. There's a reason he got paid $65 million from the Falcons. He's a good football player. And he went away from the coverage rules, and, and he did something and had, you know, had Bryce gone to the – where 
had g- gone to the guy that Jesse Bates didn't cover it, so it's <laughs> it's the easy big deep go route. Right. You know, it's just one of those deals. He's trusting what he sees on the film where the coverage should be, and uh, it just happens. You know, so. Listen, DJ Chark, can we get him back Monday night? I'm hopeful we can get him back. He's a guy that can uh, kind of extend the field. Um, and we just need to kind of move the change and establish the run. Mm-hmm. If you get a good run game, they're going to throw the eighth element in the box. And when the, once the eighth guy starts to come in the box, then there's a lot more one-on-one opportunities and, and things like that. But I just truly believe, uh, yes, I, I think we've got some talent on this team, but there's going to be some growing pains along the way. That's just part of it. Jake DeLome is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Last segment, we were uh, listening to uh, comments from Dave Doran, NC State's coach, about playing against Notre Dame, and he was talking about uh, their defensive players not having good eye discipline because Notre Dame would go to play action, and then all of a sudden there's a receiver wide open because somebody doesn't complete their assignment. Uh, And it really it brings home there's really no substitute for a good running game. It, with all the fanciness of NFL passing offenses, if you can run the ball effectively, it opens up everything else. Well, I mean, there's no doubt. It's not rocket science. And, uh, and certainly, you know, we had that with, uh, with Steve Smith. When we ran the ball effectively and then there was one-on-one coverage, there's a reason he put up some of the numbers he put up. And he helped us win many games because he couldn't be covered one-on-one. And on the flip side of it, he was such a good receiver sometimes it took two guys to mm. take him out of the game, and our run game was so successful. So, listen, we just can't turn the football over. Um, we had three last week. I call it four because we went forward on fourth down the first drive of the game. That's a turnover on downs. That's a turnover in my mind. Right. And we have the lead in the third quarter, 13-10. Loved what I was seeing. And, you know, we just had a couple of turnovers. Bates struck, uh, struck again with a pick, and then he punched the ball out for Miles Sanders. Give them credit. I think Atlanta, at the end of the season, we're going to look back and say that team was better than anybody gave them credit for. And I think the Panthers, Panthers, my, my whole deal is, can we continue to show improvement week in and week out? Because we've got a young kid. We've gave up a lot to get. We think he's the future. And can we see that progression moving forward and something to be excited about from here on out? Jake DeLome, real quick, before I move on to the Aaron Rodgers thing, uh, Obviously, we all we're all confident that Bryce Young's going to be the guy. Uh, he, to me, the best thing he did was he just looked like the game was not beyond him against Atlanta. He looked poised. He didn't look rushed, and we see that a lot from young quarterbacks. Yeah, there's no doubt. His feet told you that he wasn't rushed. And I'm going to be honest with you: when you watch that game, or if you just look at a stat sheet and you look at his numbers and you look at Ritter, the quarterback from Atlanta, you would assume Ritter played much better. I don't think that was the case whatsoever. Right. Bryce looked more comfortable dropping back to pass. He looked way more comfortable. His feet were really good. He made a couple of big, nice third down plays that I like. It's just, you know, the turnovers put us in a bind. And then when you have to start throwing, it, that gets a whole lot more difficult. He had many throwaways, which I think was great. And it wasn't like there were a ton of things he had open down the field. Um, and I'll go back to it. I mean, he was critical. He missed the deep route. And he says, I, I got to hit that. Um, and then there's some other plays along the way that, you know, just it just didn't happen, and that's part of it. But I like what I've seen. The game certainly looked like it wasn't fast in front of his eyes, and you watch a quarterback's feet, they'll tell you. When the, the feet are kind of all over the place, they're real frenetic, it's, it, they don't see the game. But I thought he saw the game well. He seemed very comfortable in the pocket, and I look forward to him improving week in and week out. All right, Jake DeLone, before we have to say goodbye, I appreciate your time again. Uh, the Aaron Rodgers experience lasted four games. And I know you're not a Jets fan, and there are a lot of people in the media. I bet you never realized how many uh, people in the media <laughs> were, were Jets fans based on how much attention. Now, I realize it's Aaron Rodgers, but, man, uh, the Jets have gotten more attention than the Jets have ever gotten. Um, just your thoughts on this experience just being so short and over. Well, certainly a crushing blow. And, and listen, it's – I hate to be this way, and I hope I don't offend anybody. It's New York. They're going to blow everything up. They're going to make a scene. You know, it's like that's the Dallas-Philadelphia right. New York effect, so to speak. Um, but, listen, I was crushed for him. I uh, love watching the guy play. Know him a little bit, not great. Was able to see him in person at training camp in Spartanburg. Thought he threw the ball extremely well. And was looking forward to see because I thought the Jets had a pretty darn talented football team, uh, especially defensively and 
some of the weapons that he can throw the football to. Mm-hmm. You never want to see somebody get hurt and all the excitement. and That's good for football, you know. And so disappointed, I fully expect him to be back uh, because I think he knows that's a solid football team and they get to retain their first-round pick next year because <laughs> he got hurt. So maybe they'll shore up the offensive line for, for him yeah. um, and uh, he'll be back next year. And the hype train will start all over again. Oh yeah, the, the, as as soon as he there's video of him on a football field throwing a ball, uh, the hype train is going to be there. Do you have a uh, do you have an opinion on turf versus grass since that's been reignited? You know what? Uh, someone asked me that yesterday, and I'm probably not a good one to talk about because as a quarterback, um, now do I did my body notice a difference on field turf and on grass the the following week after playing on it? Absolutely, the joints are a little more stiff. Uh, a little longer to recover, absolutely. But I know for myself, I love a firm footing. I love when my receivers have a firm footing. Um, so when you play, you know, up north in the wintertime, those fields, or the old grass fields, they were terrible. They were yeah. like slush. Then if you play in a rain game, I love knowing the exactness of a route for my wide receiver. So I'm kind of partial in that regard. I think you probably talk to pretty much anyone else. They're going to they're gonna say the grass. But uh, for me – you know, I'm one of those coddled little babies, I guess you can say. I like that. I like that 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 good ground that I could always have. All right, before I say goodbye, is there a team that you just hated uh, as a player? Anybody in the NFC South besides the Panthers? <laughs> yeah, that's it. professional hatred. I mean, you have to. That's to me. I'm sorry. That's how you have to feel. But that was something that. Uh, yeah, I just – it was what it was. You know, I just didn't like uh, – there were certain places I did not like to play uh, just for whatever reason, but uh, anybody else in the NFC South besides Carolina. Jake DeLome, I appreciate your time uh, Monday night against the New Orleans Saints. We didn't even uh, discuss the game per se, but we all know how big it is. Uh, you don't want to fall two games behind a divisional opponent and be a loss behind them. Uh, same thing with the Falcons hosting the Green Bay Packers. You don't want to get uh, two games back and, again, have that uh, that tiebreaker go the other way. So we all know it's a big game. Enjoy your Monday night. Enjoy your football tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Have a great weekend. You got it. Jake DeLome here on the Adam Gold Show. Uh, wow. That was uh, – I, I shouldn't be surprised, right? A football guy. I'm going to football on Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> watch high school football on Friday I night. Know. Saturday, we're going to watch the Raging Cajuns. I'm sure he watches uh, all sorts of college football on of Saturday. Of course. Uh, and, then, uh, and then Sunday, all day in front of Red Zone. I mean, I, I I didn't want to put him on the spot because if he's got one, he doesn't want to like say it out loud. Do you play fantasy football? Yeah. Because to me, the, that's that's the, that's the only thing for Red Zone. I don't get the right. Red Zone otherwise. Yeah, I, I need know. context. I need to see the game. I don't just need. How did you get in the Red Zone? What has been working? Like I, I need to see the game. I would rather watch an entire game than uh, than check out Red Zone. 